Hi everyone. In this part of the video, I will be covering principal components analysis based denoising methods for denoising diffusion MRI data. Let's quickly recap PCA. PCA typically entails projecting the data onto an orthogonal basis in order to perform a matrix decomposition. What that means is that say we had in the above 2D point cloud of data, then the two, but then the two perpendicular axes along those directions could explain most of the variance in the data. So if we decompose the data along the two axes, the hope is that we would be able to reconstruct most of it with some loss. You, uh, <clears throat> let's take a look at what this means mathematically. Say we have an n by p matrix X, and we want to summarize it with m principal components. We would typically perform a singular value decomposition. Then by selecting the top M singular values, we would reconstruct the data. Since we discarded some of the information uh, from the remaining singular values, the reconstructed matrix X would be approximately equal to the ideal reconstruction, which would have otherwise been full rank. Since we reconstruct the data with only some of the singular values and singular vectors, we compensate it with a residual error term epsilon. In, li in linear systems, we often refer to this as the residual noise. Here on the right, I have shown a simple sketch of PCA as a one layer graphical model. Say we had an n by p matrix X with a p dimensional column, uh, with, p, with p columns, um, x1 to xp. Say z1 to zm represent the principal components. If we represent this as per the equation shown here, then the w, that is the mixing coefficients w1 to wm, can be represented as shown. Notice that the PCA formulation assumes that the noise is homoscedastic in nature, meaning that all p columns of the n by p matrix x share a common error term. Then, now that we have taken a look at how PCA works, let's look at how we can use this to denoise diffusion MRI data. The idea is to take PCA and apply it in a local setting. Take this slice, for instance. Um, I know it is a part of a 4D data set, but just for the sake of simplicity, I've taken a 2D slice. Let's pick out one voxel. And for each of the voxel from each of the volumes in this 4D data, we construct a 3D neighborhood. Um, the 3D, like the 4D, uh, the gradient directions of the 4D data have been shown here along the arrow. Next, we want to flatten each of these neighborhoods out, that is the local neighborhood around each voxel, to construct this M by N matrix, which is often referred to as the Casarati matrix. Um, in order to construct this, the number of columns will be equal to the number of gradient directions and the number of rows would be equal to the size of this window. Say, for example, if the patch radius was three uh, or the patch radius was one, then the size of this window would be three by three by three, resulting in 27 rows. Next, we want to perform a low rank approximation on this M by N matrix. This is typically done for diffusion MRR using a singular value decomposition. Um, we perform an SVD on the data, which will result in the left singular vectors, singular values, and the right singular vectors. Now, we assume that only the top k singular values are sufficient to explain most of the data, and we discard the rest of the remaining, uh, the remaining singular values. Now, we reconstruct the rank uh, k data that uh, is simply done by taking the start product and we recover the entire re local neighborhood by reshaping the data. Next, we replace this voxel and its neighbors, and we continue this for the whole volume. What we end up with is the denoise data as shown over here. Here is the picture that I have adopted from the overcomplete local PCA uh, paper by Jose Manjan. Uh, as you can see, the first volume over here is the B0, and these are the diffusion-weighted images 
as the rest of the 3D volumes in the 4D data. Um, they have shown here with a window, the uh, local neighborhood that I described in the previous, um, uh, in the previous slide. When you, when you flatten this data out, it would look something like this. And once we do a rank K approximation using the PCA, X hat, that is the denoise matrix, would uh, get rid of the noisy components. This method that was proposed in 2013 makes use of uh, an empirical threshold based on the standard deviation of noise. They proposed uh, a scheme to locally average and reweight the voxels within this particular neighborhood using an empirical tau factor. This tau factor, um, they give suggestions on how to use it and you need to play around with it as the uh, shape of the data changes. Um, this is a great scheme, but if not done properly, um, it can lead to smoothing of the data. Thus, there is a need for a better method to choose the K and to threshold the data, which was addressed in the Marchanko Pasture PCA paper, which I will discuss in the next slide. Now that we have the local low rank approximation set up in place, let's look. At, let's take a look at how one can use Marchenko pasture PCA to estimate the number of singular values corresponding to the non-noisy data. Um, this was proposed in the uh, paper by Yellow Barat in 2016. So we, uh, like as I mentioned in the previous slide, we do an SVD on the data matrix X of size m by n, um, we would end up with the left uh, singular vector, singular values, and the right singular vectors. Then without loss of generality, we can construct the covariance matrix as shown here. From this covariance matrix, uh, we would get m singular values, each indexed by 1, 1, since it's a diagonal matrix. Uh, what Marchenko pasture uh, distribution, uh, what Marchenko pasture uh, says is that the bulk spectrum of this uh, of the singular values basically would be defined by this spectrum, and the noisy ones would fall within the spectrum, and the non-noisy ones outside the spectrum. It will become clearer in the next slide. So let's say um, the bulk spectrum of the eigenvalues looks like that if we sort it in descending order, where a lot of the eigenvalues would that correspond to noise uh, will fall within the spectrum. Um, the spectrum in the paper has been defined um, between minus la uh, lambda minus to lambda plus. Um, M hat represents the number of noisy singular values and P correspond to the actual signal components, which we want to keep in order to reconstruct that local patch. And uh, this is given by um, the gamma ratio uh, where M hat is the number of singular values corresponding to the noisy ones, and n is the number of data points. And the assumption is that most of the singular values would correspond to noise. It would be much more than the actual signal components. Here is the algorithm um, on how the Marchenko pasture PCA works. Say we had n voxels in the data where n is the total number of voxels across all 3D volumes. We start by extracting a 3D patch around each voxel as shown in the previous slides. In Diapi, we allow for the construction of an isotropic patches too. That means that um, along each direction for a voxel, we could have um, a patch radius that's different. So for example, you can construct a patch with a patch radius of two, one, and one. Um, I will make that clear in the implementation. <clears throat> but as per the MPPC algorithm, the recommendation is to use a patch size of two. As uh, if the PCA becomes ill-conditioned, we raise a warning to increase the patch size. Um, in general, it will result in a window size of 125. Next, we compute an SVD uh, or an icon decomposition on the extracted patch. As explained before, we compute the sample covariance matrix and set the total number of eigenvalues to m. Now we want to estimate the number of noisy singular values m hat, which would be equal to the total number uh, total number of eigenvalues 
uh, sorry, singular values M that we have. <clears throat> we initialize the variance for the formula shown above here as the mean of all the eigenvalues, lambda one to lambda N, and denoted by capital lambda. Now for each patch, we will estimate the bulk spectrum. To do so, we need a stopping criterion to classify which singular values correspond to noise and which ones correspond to the actual signal. We initialize this R as per the formula shown on the top, which comes from an algebraic manipulation that I showed in the previous slide. While the value of R is greater than zero, we decrement M hat, which was initially equal to M and recalculate the value of R. Once the while loop ends, we take the non-noisy signal components P, which is basically the total minus the noisy uh, estimated ones, and reconstruct the patch using only the P components. Once we have this done for all N voxels in the data, we get the denoised for DDWI data back. Now let's take a look at how the DIPA implementation looks and how to use it. Now, let's take a look at how to implement the MPPCA algorithm, which is a variant of local PCA in Diaper. To do so, we need to start implementing all the general Pythonic uh, LAM modules that are required. I just imported Nibabel. Um, it's not really necessary for this tutorial. Um, this is how you import MPPCA. Um, it is within the local PCA submodule. Um, if you want to load the B values in and B vectors, you need the gradient table. Um, you need the B values and the B vex. I'm sure you must have seen it in the earlier tutorials. Um, to load the data, all you need to do is data comma affine. Affine is basically the affine space of that data. Um, just do a load nifty. This is the name of my data file. Um, to run MPPCA, all you need to do is call this one command. Here you need to change the patch radius as per your data size. For now, um, I have picked out a subject from the PPMI data set, the Parkinson's data set. Um, it, is as per, it is a control subject as per the standard DTI protocol. So it has, I think one B0 and 64 gradient directions, all at B value 1000. Um, and here is just a way of visualizing it in Matplotlib. You can find this code even on the DIPI website under tutorials. Next, I'm going to, along with the um, diffusion data for the brain, I'm also going to show an example for the spinal cord data, the exact same process, load the spinal cord data, um, run the MPPCA command and denoise it. And that should be it. Uh, you can also run this via the command line interface. All you need to do is open up a new command line. So I'm just going to say anaconda prompt, then die by denoise MPPCA. That should uh, be the command that you should use. Um, as you can see, these are the options that it takes in as input the same thing as the patch radius. So for example, if I had to use a patch radius greater than two, um, I would say patch radius three, and that should work for you. And uh, the MPPCA uh, method also returns the standard deviation of the noise um, that is calculated by the MPPCA algorithm. It has a simultaneous noise estimation and the standard deviation estimation. Now let's just wait for this code to finish running. All right, looks like um, the implementation has been completed. Um, I have the outputs for both the brain and the spinal cord data. So let's go through it. Um, here is the time required for the MPPC algorithm. Let's take a look at how the denoised output looks. Um, as you can see, some of the noise has been removed by the MPPC algorithm. This is the residual map. Um, it is generally very useful to look at the residual map where you can see um, if there is any structure in the error. If you start seeing something that looks a little more ana anatomical in the residuals, it means that some of your signal has been lost and that's not a good thing. So like you can see, there is no structure in this residual map, which means that the MPPC algorithm 
is working properly. It has not removed any signal components from your data. And uh, there is some noise suppression, but you can still see that there are some parts which are still noisy. Um, uh, as mentioned earlier, estimating the rank of the SVD is in itself a hard problem. Sometimes the assumption may not hold. And let's take a look at this final core data. Um, the issue here is that the number of volumes for the spinal cord is really less. Um, and therefore the noise removed is also not that good. Like it does not give too much of a denoising performance. Um, this is one limitation of the MPPC or, or in general, the PCA setting that if the number of gradient directions that is something along the fourth dimension is too big, then the PCA becomes ill-conditioned. Or if it is too small, then um, the PCA does then estimating the rank of that um, local SVD is quite hard and um, you may not get good denoising performance. 